This is the incredible story of two ships built for the Roman Emperor Caligula, recovered nearly 2,000 years later from the bottom of a lake by the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini, and almost completely destroyed just a decade later in the last days of the Second World War. The ships deserve to be better known, and undoubtedly would have been had they survived, but there's still things to see and their story should be told. And it's a very poignant story too, all about human vanity and selfishness across millennia, from classical Rome to modern times. The story begins in Lake Nemi, which is one of several very beautiful lakes outside Rome in craters of extinct volcanoes. The locals had known for centuries that there were two huge sunken ships from Roman times at the bottom of the lake, up to 33 metres deep, but nobody had been able to raise anything other than a few bits and pieces. It needed someone with both an immense interest in classical Rome and almost unlimited resources who could literally drain the lake to recover the ships. I doubt anyone other than Mussolini could have done this, so it was incredibly fortunate that these ships ever saw the light of day again. Mussolini personally announced the project in 1927, personally turned on the taps to open the channels to drain the lake, and presented the recovered ships, the first smaller one in 1929 and the bigger in 1932. The bigger ship was 75 metres long and 29 metres wide, and the ships did not disappoint. They were huge and reasonably well preserved. A museum was built to proudly display them, and by extension the greatness of both classical Rome and fascist Italy. Nothing was known about the history of the ships, which are not mentioned in any surviving Roman literature. However, the lead piping on the ships, they had running hot and cold water, had the marks of a supplier who was active at the time of the Emperor Caligula, enabling historians to put a date on them. And who else would have had the desire and resources to build these immense and ornately decorated floating palaces, which had no form of propulsion, for such a small lake but the Emperor Caligula himself. Some of the decorations have survived and give an idea of their magnificence. You can see them in the Museo Nazionale Romano, near Rome's main Termini station. The ships were far more technically advanced than expected for Roman ships and even included the earliest known examples of ball bearings, which were used for a rotating platform on the ship. Caligula had form for doing outlandish things with ships, including the building of a two-mile bridge made of boats across the Bay of Naples so that he could ride across the bay to disprove a prophecy that he had as much chance of becoming emperor as to ride a horse across the bay. Most evidence about Caligula was destroyed by subsequent emperors, which means we can only speculate about why the floating palaces were built and how they ended up sunk lying at the bottom of the lake. Believe me, my young friend, there's nothing half so much worth as simply messing about in boats, said Ratty in The Wind in the Willows, although I suspect he had different things in mind to Caligula. Lake Nemi was sacred in Roman times, when it was known as Diana's Mirror, so it may have been something to do with that. Now this may be my frugal side, but what I'd like to know is why he needed two of them. Surely one floating palace is enough. Whatever purpose they served, it was evidently something unique to Caligula. His ashes were interred in the Mausoleum of Augustus, his step-grandfather in Rome. Incidentally, that mausoleum recently opened to the public, in March 2021, and you can learn more about it in my video on it. There's a link in the description below. The ships were put on public display in the specially constructed Museum of the Roman Ships in Nemi from 1936 until 1944 when they were destroyed by fire during fighting between the Allies and the retreating Germans. It's thought the Germans deliberately torched the ships and the local town council asked the German government for compensation in 2020. The symbolism of the story of these ships is too good to miss. Built for one crazy emperor and recovered by another, and like Italian fascism itself, providing a glimpse of something, but quickly ending in flames, ashes and disaster. But all was not completely lost. The recovery of the ships had enabled models of one-fifth of the actual size to be made and detailed plans to be drawn up. The museum also survived and reopened after the war, where you can still see the models and imagine they're the real thing. And it's not just fire which destroyed the ships. This mosaic from the ship survived until 1955, when it mysteriously disappeared but happily turned up in 2017 in New York as part of a coffee table. It's now been reunited with what's left of the ships in the Museum of the Roman Ships in Nemi. I hope you enjoyed this video on messing about with boats. Although you obviously can't see Caligula's ships, the volcanic lakes and hills around Rome are lovely, so well worth a visit. Just don't mention the war. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please feel free to subscribe and I'll be doing more videos along similar lines soon.